Hello, my friends. This is Miss Rice, and I'm so excited to do some more reading with you today. Today, we have a story called His Royal Dogness, Guy the Beagle, the remarkable true story. It's a real story of Meghan Markle's rescue dog. Meghan Markle is someone who married a prince who lived or was from London, England. Um, so we're gonna learn about this beagle. A beagle is a type of dog, so this beagle's journey. Are you ready to begin? Here we go. All right, let's find our page. <laughs> My story begins like many in the woods of Kentucky. I was lost and living alone, surrounded by tulip trees, myrtle bushes, and cranky squirrels. But as luck would have it, a nice person found me and moved me to an animal shelter. I soon learned that an animal shelter is a lot like a public restroom. You want to spend as little time in one as possible. Sadly, despite my best tail wags, no one in Kentucky came to adopt me. I'm not sure why. My ears are like velvet, my paws smell like corn chips, and I have a superior sniffing nose. I'm a catch. Oh, there's Guy the Bugle. No one's adopting him. I'm gonna take the like, jacket off my book so it's easier for me to read it to you. Okay. So, I was picked up and sent to an adoption event in Toronto, Canada, and that's where I met her, my forever owner, Megan Markle. I absolutely adored Megan. Megan and I did everything together. We went on walks, played fetch, even binge watched episodes of Suits. But I wasn't the only one. A human loved Megan too. His name was Harry. He was tall and had, the, and had hair the color of a traffic cone. But more important, he was a prince. The kind you read about in fairy tales and supermarket tabloids. Prince Harry loved Megan so much he asked her to marry him. which meant Megan was going to be a princess. Oh, no, a duchess. And I'm going to be a royal dog. I was so excited that I chased my tail for 24 hours straight. Oh, do you hear my dog Norman barking in the background? Silly dog. But I was also nervous. After all, I didn't have fancy pedigree papers I was just a regular dog who put his collar on one neck at a time. I wasn't sure if I would fit in. I knew Megan had to get the queen's consent to marry Harry, but would she welcome me to the royal family too? Megan scratched my head and said, don't worry, guy. The royal family loves dogs, especially Queen Elizabeth. They'll fall in love with you and your velvety ears and corn chip paws just like I did. It made me feel better. So off to England we went to go start our new lives at Kensington Palace. And what a place it was. There were huge fireplaces to curl up next to, antique furniture legs to gnaw on, and the royal guards were all wearing bl black poodles on their head for some reason. My friends, a poodle is a type of dog, another kind of dog. And Guy the Beagle thinks that this is a dog that the guards are wearing on their head. Do you think it's a dog or do you think it's a hat? Hmm. The palace gardens were incredible too. There were so many proper and well-mannered squirrels. I was in dog heaven. But my transition to English life wasn't all kibble and roses. I was confused by their customs. In England, dogs 
go to the bathroom on the left side of the hydrant. Instead of sneakers, they chew on trainers, and my doggy sweater was replaced with something called a doggy jumper. I think dog might, or guy might be confused because in England, they're calling things different names than they do in the United States where he's from. Things got bad when I met Queen Elizabeth's royal canines, Sir Vulcan the Great and Madame Candy the Equally Great. Canine is the name of a dog too. That's a that's a, a word that we use for dogs, canine. So he met the queen's dogs. Hello, I said. Pip, pip, cheerio, collie wobbles, Bob's your uncle, replied Vulcan. Pardon me, I said. I don't speak British. Very well, said Vulcan. As a royal dog, you never say an uncouth hello without greeting someone. You bow with your neck like this. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. No, 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 said Candy. You never say I'm sorry either. You blame it on the prime minister, such as the prime minister is the one who made me mess up mess on the carpet. I was embarrassed. I had so much to learn about being a royal dog. Meanwhile, Megan and Harry were busy getting ready for the wedding. They were, there were gowns to try on, cakes to taste, flowers to arrange, and handwritten wedding invitations to send out to all 65 million Britons. They inspired me. I was determined to be the perfect royal dog for them. So I enrolled in the prestigious Westminster Doggy Obedience Academy, which boasts such illustrious graduates as Winston Barkhill, Charles Dogwin, and Ringo Starr. Is that a dog? I think that's a human. I think he's saying something that's a joke. Silly guy. But despite all my training, I kept messing up. I ate half of Prince Charles Cornish Yarg sandwich. I shed hair on the throne. I dragged my butt on the palace carpets. I ate the other half of Prince Charles Cornish Yarg sandwich. Things got so bad that Vulcan pulled me aside and said, Tally ho, you're off your trolley, you cheeky chuckaboo. Which roughly translates to You'll never get the queen's consent to be a royal dog acting like that. And the English paparazzi were equally unkind. I felt like I was back in the woods of Kentucky, lost and alone. Lost and alone, excuse me. And then the big day came, the royal wedding. It was incredible. The pageantry, the crowds, the ridiculous hats. Megan looked gorgeous, Harry looked handsome. Everything was absolutely perfect. Everything except for one thing, me. Who was I fooling? I wasn't a royal dog. I was going to ruin Megan and Harry's special day. I was feeling hopeless when in walked Queen Elizabeth. She looked upset and I thought for sure it was because of me. But to my surprise, the queen said, oh dear guy, I can't find the sprig of myrtle for Megan's bouquet. It's been a part of every royal bouquet since the 1840s. I simply must find another one. I knew what I had to do. I ran out the doggy door, put my superior beagle nose to the ground and searched the palace gardens for the myrtle plant, a scent I knew all too well from my days in the Kentucky woods. I sniffed on top of statues, I sniffed in the fountain, I sniffed around hedges. My friend's myrtle is a type of plant. So the queen's looking for that to put in the bouquet that Megan is going to hold at her wedding. When people get married, sometimes they hold a bouquet of lots of flowers. 
I sniffed everywhere until, brilliant, I found it. I grabbed a small sprig in my teeth and ran back to the queen as fast as my legs would carry me, feeling rightfully chuffed. Hey, I was getting the hang of this British thing after all. The queen was overjoyed. Even Vulcan and Candy were impressed, shouting, scrummy hunky dory, which translates to, who's a good boy? Seizing the moment, I climbed up in the queen's lap and asked, your majesty, now may I please be a royal dog? The queen just laughed and said, my dear guy, you don't have to save the day to be a royal dog and it doesn't matter if you're a purebred corgi from Wales or a stray dog from Kentucky. All that matters is that after the wedding, we will be a family. Really? I said, moved. Yes, said the queen. You don't have to be something you're not. You only have to be what you are. And what you are is a smart little beagle with velvety ears who is loved by Megan and Harry and now me. I smiled and licked the queen's face. I was about to become a royal dog. With that, the queen leapt to her feet, well, slowly got up, she is 92 years old, and said, let's go for a ride, guy. We'll have to get this bouquet to Megan. Can we both stick our heads out the window, I asked? Absolutely, said the queen. And that's exactly what we did all the way to the royal wedding. And all right, my friends, there's a picture right here of the new Duchess Megan with Prince Harry and Prince Harry's grandmother, the Queen, and Megan's dog, Guy. What a nice story. You should always be who you are. You don't have to try to be anything that you aren't just be who you are people will love you who for who you are thanks for reading with me my friends